Log on to webcar.my for the latest reviews, comparisons and car prices to help you find your next perfect car. And don't forget to click on the subscribe button. Hello everybody, it's Adrian for webcar.my and I'm all about the details. Right now, I'm driving what I think is one of the world's most beautiful cars, the all-new 4th generation Mazda 3. And in Malaysia, it's priced between 140 over 1000 ringgit to 160,000 ringgit. And that's a lot of money to pay for what essentially is a C-segment family car. But after driving it for a few days, it's very quickly shaping up to be one of the best driver's cars I've driven in recent years. Before it was the Mazda 3, it was the Mazda Kai concept which was unveiled in 2017. And if you park the two cars side by side, you would think that the production car is an exact copy of the concept. The only other car that managed to achieve this would be the Lexus LC Coupe. The Mazda 3 is so achingly beautiful. But why? It's because of Mazda's Kodo Soul of Motion design language. It's made to give the car a little bit of life, a bit of soul. It makes the car look like a predator that's ready to pounce on its prey. Low slung bonnet, wide rear profile. And I believe that Mazda has injected quite a bit of Italian flair to it. Just take the rear of the Mazda 3 liftback for example. Don't you think it resembles a Ferrari GTC for Lusso? And I can tell you why the design is so full of soul. If you take a closer look at the body lines, there are no sharp, bold lines going across. I mean, yes, in a lot of modern cars, having those sharp lines gives the car a striking character. But sometimes it can be too clinical, too digital, too much science. The Master 3's panels, on the other hand, is handcrafted by their own Takumis. Every crease, every panel, every reflection is made by hand, giving it the car full of life and soul. What's even crazier is that the body panels on the liftback and sedan are unique to each other. Even the little trims like the grille, lower bumper, window trims are also different to give the car a differentiated character. The liftback being a bit more sporty, while the sedan has a more business executive-like image. I mean, this is exactly why these cars are so expensive. Most of the body panels on the Mazda 3 is smooth except for one strong body line that runs across on the lower section of the car. This is done in such a way so that light reflects and bounces off the body panels in a very specific and mesmerizing way. Another reason why Mazda's paint quality is one of the best in the mass market segment simply because it needs that mirror finish to achieve that reflection that the designers intended it to. Till now, I still can't fully describe why the Mazda 3 is so pleasing to the eyes. Maybe it's the profile, maybe it's the smooth body panels, maybe it's a combination of both. One thing's for sure though, it's a head turner. I love driving, not for the sheer speed, but for how the car communicates with me. How immediate it reacts to my steering inputs, how the suspension loads up mid-corner, and how it feels coming out of the corner. It doesn't matter what wheel drive it is or what links and beams that it uses. To me, it's all about feeling. And the Mazda 3 strikes all the right chords. Every turn of the wheel, you know exactly where the car is pointed at. You feel the suspension loads up mid-corner. And you feel the amount of G-force being applied onto the tyres. It's just so communicative. And the GVC Plus that's working in the background to help stabilise the car just brings everything together. It works by retarding the power output and applying little amounts of braking force on individual wheels to help stabilize the car mid-corner and reduces the body movement of your passengers. I mean, it's basically witchcraft. You can enjoy attacking an apex without having your other half complaining. Now, you techies out there are going to go on and on about the new Mazda 3 having torsion beam and it's not going to be as good, it's not going to be drive as dynamic as the previous gen Mazda 3 with multi-links. Well, that's where you're wrong. You see, even though Mazda calls it a torsion beam, if you look at the design, it's unlike your conventional torsion beam. It's narrow in the center and it goes progressively wider as it extends out to the wheel. And this helps introduce a little bit of flex and allows the rear wheels to stay glued onto the tarmac mid-corner. In a nutshell, without going too much into the details, 
it's miles and miles better than the previous generation mountain links. Not only is it dynamic and light on its feet, it's also adequately comfortable and pliant on bad roads. Except you do get a little bit of jolt coming through the wheels from the low profile rubbers, not so much on the suspension. For a family car, I think this is quite a comfortable option. Most importantly, you don't have to be a professional driver to be able to tell all of this. Just bring your mother to test drive one of these, and I guarantee you the first comment she's gonna say is, wow, this car drives quite well, huh? I know the comment section is gonna go crazy about the Mazda 3 not having a turbocharged engine, and that the Honda Civic 1.5 Turbo is gonna tap out this car 100%. I mean, what do you expect? Turbo versus NA? Of course lah. Except the Mazda 3 is not exactly underpowered either. The 2-litre naturally aspirated Skyactiv G petrol engine makes 162 horsepower and 230 newton meters of torque. To put that into perspective, it makes only 11 horsepower and 7 newton meters less than the Honda Civic Turbo. And moreover, you get a proper 6-speed automatic transmission with sports mode and pedal shifters. Torque delivery is healthy above 3,000 RPM, and it give you a very sweet engine note all the way up to 6,500 RPM. And if you fill it up with RON97 high octane fuel, you'll sound even better. Like I've said, the Mazda 3 is a great, great handling car. You just don't notice the power deficit 99% of the time. The driving-centric character of the Mazda 3 doesn't stop there. Take a look at the point of view of the driver's seat. You have everything surrounding you, much like a single-seater car. Think McLaren F1 and Speedtail. This is done in such a way so that the driver's field of vision is as less distracting as possible. And to achieve this, Mazda has engineered some little little details that you might not notice at a glance. For example, the instrument cluster. If I didn't tell you, you might think that this speedometer is a physical analog dial, but it's actually a digital screen. The refresh rate and realism of this digital speedometer is at its maximum potential and this is done to help your brain to easily read and decipher the speed, reducing mental fatigue. There are only six information that are displayed on the instrument cluster. Tachometer, speedometer, coolant temperature gauge, fuel gauge, fuel economy status, as well as your Mazda iActiveSense ADAS. Nothing else. No media, no navigation, nothing. All in the name of reducing driving distraction. The 8-inch infotainment system is now a non-touchscreen unit so that it can be placed further and lower out of your field of vision. All the controls are via this rotary knob down here. I have no qualms about it being a non-touch sensitive unit because my girlfriend is like that too. Except Apple CarPlay and Android Auto were designed to work with a touchscreen. Although Mazda has tried their best to integrate the two applications with their rotary knob, the user experience is somewhat lacking without a touchscreen. But then again, you shouldn't be doing all this stuff while you're driving. Just leave it to your Google Assistant or Siri. Hey Google, navigate to Cheetah Mall. Navigating to Cheetah Mall. If you look further down to the center console, there are only 10 buttons that are illuminated at any given time. What's even more amazing is that the color temperature of this backlit has been made to match the backlit color temperature of the instrument cluster at night. Now, what this does is, when you're driving at night, you will have reduced cognitive load for having to switch between different color temperatures and freeing up more brain power to focus on the road. Their attention to detail doesn't stop there. The speaker placement for the eight speaker setup has been purposefully placed so that it gives you maximum auditory pleasure. Now traditionally, you have the front speakers mounted on the lower section of the door cuts. In the Mazda 3, it's positioned up here right where the door handles are. Now this is done in such a way so that when the bass drops, the frequency doesn't rattle the door cuts and it has a shorter travel from the speakers to your eardrums, giving you more clarity. My gosh, this attention to detail is almost Lexus-like. Now today we have both the liftback and sedan with us. And how should you pick? Well for me personally, I'm definitely more inclined to the liftback because simply I think it looks a little bit sexier and it drives a little bit sharper because it doesn't have the extra length on the 
rear axles compared to the sedan. But don't for a moment think that the sedan is not as engaging to drive. It's still as sharp, as dynamic, and as fun to drive. For me, I don't need the extra boot space because I think that the lift bag already has decent amount of boot space. But if you're a family guy and you need something a little bit more spacious to carry your family and things around, definitely go for the sedan. But do not for a moment mistake that the sedan has more leg room at the rear because I've tested, they both the lift bag and sedan have the same amount of leg room. So it's just a matter of preference and practicality needs. So is the all new Mazda 3 worth your 160,000 ringgit? Of course not. It's 20% more expensive than its equivalent rivals, but it's not 20% more car. I just can't bring myself to justify its high price tag. However, the Mazda 3, or the Mazda brand in general, has become a brand with premium aspiration, an object of desire. It's a little bit like a Chanel bag. You don't need it, but you want it. And that's the Mazda 3 for you. Thanks for watching, we hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos like this. And let us know in the comment section below whether are you lusting over a Master 3.